Software is one of my favorite tools when it comes to building complex web applications. But sometimes you find yourself needing just to spin up something really simple for your business like an employee directory. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com and we're a software implementation partner. If you haven't gotten started yet with software, you can do so for free using the affiliate link in the description below. Let's build that employee directory. So I'm gonna come up here and click on new application and we can just search for employee directory. And you'll see that we've got this nice template ready to go. When you click on preview, you can see we have a couple different options for data sources. This works both for Airtable and Google Sheets. In today's video, I'm going to be doing this in Airtable, but this will work equally well for you if you're using Google Sheets. Let's click to use that template and you'll need to connect it to your Airtable account. Hit continue. And now we can copy this space into our Airtable account. What this does is it gives us all of the backend data that we need inside of Airtable and we can edit records inside of Airtable and do this internally. But when it comes to surfacing this out to our team, our employee directory is going to be in software. Let's take a quick look at what's inside of Airtable. So you can see we have four different tables here. One is the employee directory itself. These are all of the different contacts that we have inside of our company. Next, we have departments and this has links to the different employees that we have. And next we have requests for employee time off as well as the ability to log our expenses. Now let's head back into software and we have our Airtable connected to this automatically. Now we just need to go to our application. And you can see software has this great template already set up for us. We don't have to start from scratch when it comes to building this out. This area is called Software Studio. This is where we get to actually make the edits to how our application looks and feels. If you hover over these blocks at the top, you can see that there's certain content that's available if you are a logged in user or if you're logged out. We can also get really granular with this and determine who can see what based on user roles. So let's check this out. We'll go over to our users tab here and you can see that we have our users and these are bi-directionally synced from inside of Airtable. So this is pulling those employees, those users are coming from the employee directory itself. That means that any of these people are going to be able to log into our web application and we can control who can see what. Now we're not gonna get into the full details of user groups today. We've created several other videos around this as well. But if you click into user groups, we can see that there's a manager's user group created by default. We can create as many of these as we need. Let's go ahead and edit these settings and you can see that we can either add users manually to this or we can add people based on conditions. So this is pulling from our Airtable data and we could do this by department or in this case we're doing by employee type. If that employee type is a manager, now the managers are able to do certain things inside of software that the regular employees can't. Let's publish our application. I'm doing this on a software subdomain right now, but you can actually map your own custom domain so that maintains the look and the feel of your own company brand. Let's preview this to see what it looks like from the outside. Up in the upper left-hand corner, you can see we can view this as a non-logged in user, or we can impersonate any of our users so we can view this through their lens. By default, there's not a lot to see here as a non-logged in user because we're using this as an internal employee directory. So really all we have to do is be able to log in to be able to see the core information with this. This is really just a landing page. But the beautiful part about software is that it's geared both for internal experiences, you can build internal tools, or you can make things public and it's got SEO features to be able to actually index the pages of your site as well. So you might choose to create somewhat of a hybrid for this. For example, you might have an employee directory that's an about page that as people are perusing your website and they wanna see who's on the team, they have public access to it. So it's really up to you how you you want to manage this? Is this for internal reasons or for external? So now let's log in as an actual user. We'll choose Pat here. And as we see this from her perspective, now we've got our departments, our org chart, we can submit expenses and book time off. Just as we saw those tables inside of Airtable, now we've got the ability to actually create those records from our web application. So if I scroll down here, we can see our different people on our team. We can filter this. We've got some nice buttons. We can say, hey, just show me people from the New York office and it'll filter that down. We could change it, remove that filter. Maybe I wanna see just the people that are on the engineering team and that'll filter down as well. So we've got these really nice components which are called blocks inside of software to be be able to visualize data in a way that looks really nice on the screen. One of my favorite blocks, if we click on this org chart page, is that there's a designated organizational chart block for visualizing this information. So we wanna see who reports to who in this. And look, we can see the number of direct reports and we can drill down those different layers 
to see how this team is structured. This is really helpful as your team's growing out. If we look at this back inside a software, it's super easy to configure. We're just telling it our data source and our base. And if you look inside of Airtable, this is all governed by these individuals and who they have as their manager. This structures our actual organizational chart so that we can drill into those different levels. Now we can also click to submit expenses. This opens up a new page where we have a form and we can fill out information about our expenses. We even have a file picker so we can upload our receipts here. And there's a form for booking time off as well. So we can enter that information, send that request off to our manager. Now, I don't know about you, but typically as an employee, I would want to see the time off that I've already taken. Maybe I'm determining if I have enough PTO accrued where I could take a vacation next month. So instead of just having a form, I'd really like to be able to see my existing time off. If we go back into Airtable in our employee time off, we can see that there's already a number of requests for time off for these different individuals, a lot for Jen and Pat. So let's build out this functionality so you can see how easy it is to do inside a software. I'm gonna to go to my pages here and from our pages, let's go to that book time off page that we have. And you can see all that's there right now is that form that we were talking about to actually book the time off to make that request. So let's click and add a new block here. And from the blocks, we could probably do a list with horizontal cards. In this case, I think I'm just gonna choose a table because it's pretty simple data that we're working with here. Once we've chosen the base that we're working with, here's where we're going to connect it to our employee time off table. And next, let's click on our content tab. And this is where we can change these fields so that it maps a little bit better. We can see that some of this mapped correctly. We've got our time off type here. So that's actually pulling from our data, but these other things isn't actually mapping very well. So let's go ahead and change what that looks like. Image right off the bat, I don't think we need it. Let's change our simple text here to be our reason for why we're requesting the time off. I'm going to delete this status, delete the rating, now let's add a couple fields. I'm gonna add a field here. We'll have this be text. And I just want this to be the start date so I can search for my time off start and we'll add one for the end. And let's add one more field to show their email address. Now, if I'm logged in as Jen and I scroll down, I can see we have our table of leave here. But there's a problem. When I'm logged in as Jen, I should see these J Cooper. But at this point, I'm actually looking at all of the leave in the entire database. We probably don't want to do that except at the executive level. So that's where we can add conditional fields filters so I can only see the records designated for me. We'll click back on source and we can scroll down to where we have conditional filters. We're gonna add a condition here and it'll be a pretty simple one. We'll say if the employee email is or matches and then rather than just putting a static value, we'll click here and click on logged in users and we'll match that up with the email address. Now Jen's only able to see her actual time off instead of seeing hers and Pat's and everybody else's. And the last thing I do now that we fix this is I probably don't have to see my email address. I just know that this is my time off. And so we can easily delete that extra column. I hope this has been helpful for you to see just how easy it is to get set up with Softer's employee directory and be able to tweak and make the changes you need to personalize it for your company. Get started today with Softer by clicking the link in the description below.